we need Forgive us everything Help us to love us Yours is the kingdom, the power and glory, now and forever. Welcome to St Margaret's Lothbury's uh, Short Service Online. It's great that you've been able to join us and I hope in, as we are almost celebrating the fifth week since we last had a live service at St Margaret's, it is good that you've been able to join us on Zoom. And thank you Will for leading us in worship. Uh, in a few moments Sophie is going to come and speak to us and before that I'd love to read a few verses from St John's Gospel chapter 20. John 20 and beginning at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hand and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And now over to Sophie. In our passage today, John 20, we meet the disciples and I want you to imagine with me what they must have been feeling. Their last interaction with Jesus was not a very glorious one. They basically abandoned him um, to the soldiers, to the arrest. And now they are in this room knowing that Jesus has died, their leader. But something very strange is happening. They've just been told by Mary um, who is a woman, and in those days they didn't pay a great deal of attention to the testimony of a woman. Um, so they've been told by a potentially dodgy witness that um, she has seen Jesus, that the body of Jesus has gone from the tomb and she has seen him. So there's some kind of glimmer of something going on. Was it a ghost? You know, What was it? They're confused. But clearly they're also fearful. They have the doors locked, John tells us, for fear of the Jews. So they are worried about retribution from the authorities because of their association to Jesus. So they're feeling ashamed, probably, of their last interactions with Jesus. But they're also afraid to be known, to be counted for knowing him. 
and so shame and fear are keeping them behind locked doors. Now we're not in the same uh, position as the disciples but there are some resonances uh, with us I think with their story. We're behind closed doors, many of us, um, hopefully we've done that as a positive choice to protect others, but probably there is some fear mixed in with all of that. Now you may have a clear conscience about the way that you've acted over the last two weeks, but if you're anything like me, um, you might be feeling, when you reflect back, a little bit uh, less than proud about some of your behaviour in response to this crisis. Perhaps like me, there are some things you've thought or done that, that actually have revealed some, some kind of darker corners in your heart. And I'm not talking about guilt, that feeling of kind of, have I done a, enough to help? But more those sort of negative attitudes in our heart that can often pop up, um, especially when we're under pressure, that don't reflect Jesus to other people. Some things I've been struggling with are um, fear, um, particularly when I have to get food um, and in those initial few days um, worry about things like paracetamol. You know, if we suddenly have to isolate, do, do I have enough? Um, which has led me to kind of to, to fear about that. Um, I've definitely uh, shown a lack of trust. Um, have I really trusted that God will guide me through the challenges that this pandemic throws up for us as a family? The other thing I felt, I don't know if you've had this, is um, temptation to envy, um, to look at other people around me um, and to envy their circumstances, their situation. We can all do this in different ways. It might be that those of us who have family, who have children, say, are envious of those sometimes um, who don't, so that we can get a bit of time on our own. Or it might be that those of us who are living on our own are feeling envious of those who have people with them. Or perhaps you wish you had a garden or, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. So perhaps we might have some things uh, lingering with us that we're not particularly proud of. What does Jesus say to us? Now, Jesus had been abandoned by his followers. Um, he'd also explained to them that he was going to die and to be resurrected and that they would see him again. So he would have been completely justified in, in kind of throwing the disciples over, in perhaps choosing some new ones or or even just rebuking them for their behaviour, for their lack of faith. You know, why were they so fearful when he had told them that he was going to, that it was going to be okay? But instead, what do we see Jesus doing? He reveals himself to them, he comes to them, and he makes it clear to them who he is. He kind of scatters their confusion, he shows them his pierced side. This is Jesus, it's not someone else, and he is alive. But also, he speaks peace. This is extraordinary because Jesus would have been entirely justified in giving them a bit of a dressing down. But instead he declares that there is now peace between himself and the disciples, between the disciples and God. Because of his scars, because of his wounds on their behalf, their sin has been dealt with. That, that sort of shameful abandoning of him at his arrest, it's gone. Nothing stands in the way between them and God. And Jesus wants them to know this, to know that God forgives them and loves them. So no wonder the disciples were overjoyed when they realised that Jesus was actually alive and that he had come to them, not in anger, but in peace, calling them back into a loving intimacy that will drive out their fear. And you and I have been called into that same intimacy, that same forgiveness and peace. So whatever you're not proud of, Jesus wants to wash that all away. I don't know about you, but I know that I'd like a bit more of that joy that Jesus brings. I'd like to wake up each day not fearful, but resting in the peace that Jesus has brought me. So let's ask the Holy Spirit, perhaps use the worship following, to help us, to help you that, that over the coming weeks, months ahead, he would enable us to become more and more responsive to Jesus, even more ready to welcome and enjoy the peace that he has won for us. Amen.
you got 